All right, welcome everybody. My name is John Pizzo and I'm the principal of the Early College High School program. What we have for you here today is some information about the program and about how to apply. So I'm going to go through a presentation. So if you're in this recession, this is being recorded. Um, it looks like the messages may be recorded as well. So um, just want to give everybody the heads up if you want to stay off camera and if you have your mics turned off for the presentation. We will be answering questions if you do want to put things in the chat. Miss Susan Harris is here, our school secretary, along with our school counselor, Miss May Vias. So they'll be monitoring the chat. And then at the end, we're going to hear some students. We have a student panel. You'll get to hear directly from our current students. And then we'll end the recording if you want to un, um, unmic and ask questions um, as not, not part of the recording session at the end of the, our presentation. All right, here we go. I'm glad you guys joined us. Sorry about the technical issues earlier. Oh. All right. Early College High School. So we are a program of Rodriguez. So as you see, the Rodriguez Mustang, our students, if you're accepted into early college high school, you become a Rodriguez student. So you see, you will become a Mustang for Rodriguez. But also, you're applying students that get accepted to our program to Solano College. So you're coming out of eighth grade and you become a college student at Solano Community College, and they are the Falcons. So our students are Mustangs and Falcons, and then they decided that we would be what would rep truly represent this program of dual enrollment students, high school and college. And you see the Pegasus there. So you can see how we combine, we're Mustangs, we're Falcons, and we're, we're Pegasus, the early college high school program. What is early college? Um, early college is a unique experience for high school students to take college classes at the same time that they're taking high school classes and working on a high school diploma. Um, we're located right here on the Solano College campus. And so in a normal year, everything takes place here on campus at Solano College, the high school teachers and the college classes. This year, of course, we're on distance learning, but we're really hopeful that everything will be back to normal in the fall where we have our new students entering the program. All the students in the program will earn transferable college units, learn how to navigate the college process, gain that college experience and support needed for now navigating the junior college system and being ready for a four-year college when they exit early college high school. We are accepting 100 freshmen. Last year we expanded our program and moved to 100 students in 10th grade and we brought in 100 students for the first time. We're bringing on 100 ninth graders next year. Like I said before, we're an extension of Rodriguez High School and we are located at the, on the Fairfield Solano Community College campus. Current program, we've had three graduating classes. The early college program is in its seventh year. There's 312 students in the program right now. We will be growing to our capacity of 400 in the next two years as we bring in 100 students each year. And that'll be our full capacity for this program moving forward. So we'll, we'll have grown from a smaller program to 400 students with 100 students in each grade level. Students are required to take between four and five high school classes each semester, along with always one college course, a minimum, to be a dual enrollment student. Some of the benefits for students that are in early college, um, an increased motivation. Uh, we support students getting to college to four-year colleges and beyond. And we like to think there's a real academic benefit from being here. Um, students don't have to be here. It's, this is a choice that students make. So students are motivated to succeed academically. Uh, they wanna work hard, they wanna do their homework, they wanna work collaboratively with others. And so we feel like there's a real academic benefit to being here and a social benefit. Uh, our students are really respectful to each other. Um, it's just a great learning environment and we have that small school feel of 100 students in the, every grade level. Does it reduce cost to going to college? This is a zero cost program. You don't spend any money. 
we provide all the books and fees and tuition. There's everything is covered. You don't spend any money at early college. So some students will leave with up to two years of college completed towards a bachelor's degree um, at zero cost. So you're going to walk out of early college after four years with between one and two years of college already done with that bachelor's degree in mind. Uh, increased graduation rates. Uh, we've everybody who's at early college or graduate. We have a hundred percent graduation rate, so we really support students in getting that high school diploma and college credits at the same time. And you have that smaller, rigorous, and high quality learning environment at early college. Our staff. We've grown. We have nine high school full time teachers here on campus. Uh, as we hit capacity in a couple years, we'll be up to eleven teachers here in our program. High school. Teachers. We have a principal, that's me. Um, we have a school full-time secretary in the office, a full-time campus monitor, and a full-time counselor that supports our program. We also have staff at Rodriguez that support us, or the school psychologist, treasurer, and other people who support the program. But full-time staff here on campus are our nine teachers, um, principal, secretary, monitor, and counselor. The college courses students take are they pick, they pick the courses. There's a lot of uh, options for students here. Uh, it depends on when they're available and what students are interested in. We don't have a prescribed course where we say everybody has to take these college courses. Students really do get to choose and create their own path and four-year plan. We want students to work on their, their basically their general ed classes for, for their four-year degrees. We don't have electives here. We don't have the typical high school electives. So basically you're taking your high school electives are college courses instead in the place where tra a traditional student would have a high school elective. Um, we don't have foreign language teachers. And so we don't, our students will take their foreign language requirements at the college level. They'll either take Spanish, French, or American Sign Language is what Solano College offers. So everybody in our program at some point in their four-year plan, whether it's ninth grade or 10th grade or even 11th grade, we'll start taking foreign language classes at the college level. Some courses are offered at night. Uh, it's not required. We've had students go through the program and have just an eight to three schedule. Um, it's, they're, they're a little more limited to finding the courses that you need. Some courses will go a little after three. Some students will choose to take a night class here or there. Um, so there is a variety of things that students can, can take in the college level. Summer, a lot of students will decide to take a summer course. It's not officially part of our program. It's optional for students. A lot of students decide to take a summer course, but it's definitely not required and it's not part of our program um, where the high school teachers are on vacation. So there, just want to put that out there. Um, the call, these are college classes. So we have our high school classes, but the students take college courses that are designed for adults, for college age audience. So. We're really looking for students that are mature enough to handle the content and can um, can be self advocates for themselves and let us know and and handle the college class. So uh, parents, uh, our high school teachers, you know, they use Aries. They have they teach just like a regular high school teacher would. The parents can give them a call or an email. They'll get back to you. You can monitor your students' grades and how they're doing, progress reports, report cards, all of that like a traditional high school. But the college classes, on the other hand, they are, it's up to the students to let us know how they're doing. Um, we can't pick up the phone and give the college professor a call. This, we, we work with the students and teach them how to reach out to the professors if they need help, how to reach out to their counselor and get all the supports that are offered here for college students. But their parents can't do it for them. So we got to work on that from the start. So we'll, we'll sit down and you can meet with a high school teacher and we can uh, be in full contact, but as far as the college professors, it's up to the students to make those appointments, to reach out to the professors. So we really are looking for a self-advocate. So the students who do really well are the ones that can be honest and speak up and say, I need help. Here's how I'm doing. Um, and we'll work with them. The ones that don't let us know and say everything's going great. And then some, sometimes there can be a surprise at the end with a grade. So we really want to work with students to be self-advocates and communicate how they're doing in their college class. This is our class schedule. There's no bells here at early college, but this is how it, in a normal year when we're in person, 
we are on a block schedule. So each high school class is just under two hours. So you can kind of see how a Monday, Wednesday class works where first period will meet eight to 9.50 on Mondays and Wednesday. Third period, you can see the lunch is a little longer than other schools. We have lots of clubs we'll get to. So there is a nice break for students to join clubs, uh, form study groups during that hour long break in between third and fifth. Then we repeat the same schedule, but with classes two, four, and six on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Fridays, the, um, most of the college classes, the majority of college classes are Monday, Wednesday, or Tuesday, Thursday. So on Friday, we, we do each of our high school classes, but just in a shorter block of time. Now when students, they're only gonna have four or maybe five high school classes each year, so there'll be a period or two in their day where there'll be no class. So when that time of the day comes, students can plug a college class in that time or maybe have a, have a break in their day, like on a Friday. If they don't have a fifth period, well then they won't have a class from 10 to 10.50. They'll be on campus and doing homework and um, forming study groups and things like that. Here's a sample schedule for our freshmen. First semester when you enter early college, we, we limit the students to one college class. We wanna make sure they're really successful, that they're partnered up with other students in the same course, they work with their mentor, and they're really able to be successful with one college class before we let them take multiple college classes. So this student, uh, on a, this is a in-person schedule kind of year. They had English 9 from 8 to 9.50, high school biology from 10 to 11.50, and that was the end of the high school day at 11.50. They found a Spanish class. They said it to take Spanish from the start at the first semester. Spanish 31 is our the college's entry level Spanish, and that was from 1 to 2.15 on Mondays and Wednesdays. So this student is done with school at 2.15. Um, that's their last class of the day. They're able to go home if their parents pick them up or they can stay on campus um, and finish out the day however they want to do on Mondays and Wednesdays. Tuesdays and Thursdays is a full high school day. Just a PE, then math one, then our lunch and our club time from 12 to one and then the college readiness. And that's our high school elective that everybody takes that really supports the students with their college class, supports them with note-taking skills, study skills, group collaborative work, um, tutorials that they work on. So that's the support class that we have each year, ninth grade through 12th grade, and it fits into the schedule. And then you can see this student on Friday, because they had that Spanish 31 during that fifth period time slot, on Fridays they wouldn't have a class, they'd have biology till 9.50, and they wouldn't have another high school class till 11. So they'd find some place to be on campus, the library, the cafeteria, and they'd have an hour break in the middle of the day where there is no class on Fridays. And so we do create things for them to do during that time. There's support sessions and things like that. Then they would do their PE class, then there's that lunch break, then math and college readiness would finish out a Friday in a typical year when we're on campus. Extracurricular activities. We have a lot of students at early college, high school that play sports for Rodriguez. They're Rodriguez students. So all students that they want to play sports there are Rodriguez students, so they would play on a Rodriguez sports team. So they have um, the ability to do that. Um, some of the activities we get questions on are students, they wanna come over and they wanna be part of the Rodriguez high school band or be part of a Rodriguez lunchtime club or something during the school day. And that's not available to our students. Um, eight to three, they're here. That's our time. Anything after three o'clock, high school sports, um, some of the activities, the dances, prom, football games on Friday night, homecoming, things like that, our students are eligible to go over there. They have a Rodriguez ID card and they can head over to the main campus and participate. But during the eight to three time, we are, we're here on this campus and we don't go back and forth, so. But we do have a lot of our own student clubs um, during lunchtime. So you can see we have a, a lot of clubs that have been started, art club, we have an academic decathlon team. The students just started a book club uh, the last couple weeks. Our black student union is new this year. Uh, drama um, is on hold this year because we're on distance learning, but I'm sure we'll be bringing that back. Our GSA, our honor society, 
our Hope Club, happy, open, positive environments. The students really work on mental wellness and our support for each other in that club. Key Club, Robotics, Senior Class Club, and Speech and Debate. So we do have a lot of different choices for students. There's multiple clubs running each day of the week uh, here at Early College for our Early College students. Lunchtime, um, we, there is a school cafeteria here for open to everybody who goes to Solano. So they do serve food um, um, in the school cafeteria, but we do have our Fairfield Sassoon School District lunch that's provided and sent over. We have carts that are delivered every day with hot food and cold food. Um, and students that are on free and reduced lunch can pick it up and anybody can purchase the school lunch at a, at a much cheaper price than what the school cafeteria is selling, but they do have lots of different choices for students here from the college, but we also have the high school lunch service available each day. And there's a menu and students can sign up and buy the food or check it out. This is a sample four year plan of how it works when you come to early college. In ninth grade, ninth grade there are five high school classes that students have to take. So you can see the English nine, biology, college readiness, and PE. And everybody comes in, we have two different math classes. We either go to math one, or we go into the math one, two combo class that moves faster. So as you can see at the bottom, we don't have high school honors or AP courses. This program's not designed as an, as an honors AP program. Um, it, we, we are looking for students that are meet, can meet the standards and are able to work hard because they do start taking college classes from the start. We ease them in slowly, but it does get more rigorous as each year goes by as they take more advanced courses. Um, everybody takes one class. You see, we put area six, our Spanish 31, French 31. We sign language is on there. There's a lot more choices than just that, um, but you, I'll, I'll show you what area six means here in a second or area three. So really the ninth graders are taking, if they didn't get into Spanish or French or sign language, they're taking criminal justice, they're taking cinema, they're taking music, art, photography. There's a lot of different courses that will fit into the ninth grade year really nice. Second semester, some of the students have requested, they're, they're doing really well, A's and B's in all their classes. They may take a second college course but they are not required to there. So they'll take um, either another three unit course, they'll continue with the foreign language requirement to get that done in ninth grade, or they'll jump into, like I said, the area 3A, the art, cinema, music, theater, classes like that, our students have been really successful with in their first year of high school. Moving into 10th grade, we do, everybody takes English 10, that our world civilization course comes into play we always have college readiness and then that second year of PE um, is required. Students will either be in the math two, three, which is finishing the high school math program or in math two, depending on where they came into high school. And then the, our high school classes are year long courses and the college classes um, are semester long. So there's lots of different choices. They don't get a class they want one semester, they have another eight different semesters to pick classes for college. Then we get to 11th grade, Everybody's everybody has high school English for one more year, English 11, and the students who started high school in Math 1 will, will still have five high school classes. They'll need to take Math 3 to finish their high school math program. And then everybody takes chemistry, U.S. history, and college readiness. So this is where some students will go down to four high school classes, and some will still have five because they're finishing math. And then a lot more things open up. Um, there's area two, area four, area one. There's a lot of different choices. You'll start seeing students will, some will still take one college class and that's just fine because one college class is a semester long and it's as much credit as a year of a high school course. So you're never falling behind at early college if you take one college course. You're always ahead and it's, we never put pressure on students to take more units. But students do have a chance to take between three and 11 and a half college units, depending on what is appropriate for them in their four year plan. And then when they get to their senior year, this really opens up for 
students that are taking that area one, the, the college English. The goal for every student is by after three years with us, even though they're not honors classes in English 9, 10, and 11, our goal is to get them ready for college English 1 by the time they're a senior. And when they take that course, it, it's going to give them their English 12 year of credit, and it's going to be checking that box towards their bachelor's degree by taking English 1. That's our area 1. So you'll see there's no high school English in 12th grade. There's also no high school math in 12th grade. We want students, once they get through math three, they've met their high school graduation requirement. They have their three years of math. Or if they did their high school math in two years, their one, two, and two, three, they'll take a college math class. And there's lots of different choices depending on their math skill level and their desired major in the future, whether they take statistics or if they go into more of a pre-calculus type of math or college algebra lots of choices that they go through so we really work with them to figure out which courses are more appropriate for them then it opens up to college sciences and lots of different things but the high school classes senior year are american government and economics that's one semester each there's going to be a high school elective which will probably have pe and maybe some other things in the future college readiness and the really interesting and great part of our program is the capstone senior project course this is a course that we check in with students throughout their senior year and they get to create a project in their last year of high school, whether it's a creative arts, community service, or career exploration. Um, the seniors actually this week just finished up doing their, their project pitches where they presented their plans and ideas for their project and they'll be carrying it out their senior year. And there's a lot of amazing things students are doing um, to help the community or something creative um, that we're really proud of the students. So it's a really neat part of our, our program to have a senior project at the end, which counts as one of their four classes. You always have to have a minimum of four high school classes. Now in the last couple slides, you can, if you go back and see what it was that area three, area four, this is just the, we won't spend too much time on this tonight, but we'll go through this in, in future. If you're accepted, we'll have a whole information night where Ms. May, our counselor, will go through this even more. but. Just to touch on it, when we do pick college courses, we use this IGETSI as our guide because we know these college classes at Solano will transfer to the UCs and the CSUs. So we just wanted to have this part of the presentation. So if you go back and watch it or we're going to post it on our website and you want to kind of get an idea of what these courses are, you can see area one is our college English, which is students will take in 12th grade. English one and maybe English, some of them do take English two. The uh, small group communication, oral communication is one of the CSU requirements. Area two is the math component and the students take that after they finish high school math three. But here's that area three where students will start in ninth grade and 10th grade and start picking courses from these general ed categories. So they can, they're meeting these, these check marks on their, for their bachelor's degree and making sure they, they're transferable classes. There's that art, cinema, dance, music, photo, theater. So students will start planning out their path by taking courses from these different categories. There's area four, a lot of times students will be in area four uh, in 10th grade, 11th grade, and there's our sociology, criminal justice, psychology, lots of choices in area four. And then the sciences, we recommend that they wait till 11th or 12th grade because they do get more, um, more intense as far as the work and making sure students have done their high school sciences first before they take the, the college lab sciences. And then here's that area six where that's the language component. Our goal for every student is to meet the A through G requirements, making sure they do at least two years of a language. Um, two high school years is what's required required for the UCs and CSUs. And two high school years equals two college semesters. So students have to take two semesters of either Spanish, sign language, uh, or French. And you can see it's one of the requirements here. So it is part of our program. Some data, some early college success. We've had three graduating classes. Um, 2018 was our first group of seniors. We've had 100% graduation rates for our students in our program. 
Over 90% of our students have graduated meeting the A through G requirement, which is taking all of the courses needed for the four-year schools and earning C's or better in all of those courses. 34% um, of the students that have graduated high school have um, completed an AA degree as well. So about a third of the students do take a full 60 units in four years. Oftentimes they'll take a class in the summer to, to get to that high of a number of credits, which isn't required. Um, the goal of our program is not to finish an AA degree for every student. That's a lot of units. We figure every, every class they earn, if they end up with 40 units when they get out of high school, I mean, that's more than a year of college. So anywhere between 30 and 60 units is what the students walk out of. So it's really based on the individual student and what their goals are. In our first three years of graduating classes, we have averaged 50 units per student um, as they leave high school. So that summer classes included, but students have averaged 50 college units in their four years of high school. The minimum requirements to get in, you don't have to be a 4.0 student. You don't have to be coming from a gate program. We are looking for a student that um, has, is meeting their eighth grade standards or nearly meeting, able to get A's and B's, maybe some C's, a 2.5 GPA or higher. But we're really looking for students with excellent attendance, um, definitely responsible behavior. They have to be able to be, handle themselves on a college campus. Um, we, we have a lot of trust built in. We, they need to be able to handle themselves, be respectful. Uh, we do ask for recommendations from the teachers, and I'll talk about that here in a little bit, and a desire and motivation for the student to attend. We, we want students who want to be here, that are looking for a different type of high school environment, that are interested in the program, not because they are made to come here. With a few students who haven't done well, um, Maybe mom and dad wanted it more than the student. So we really, student, it's, it's a lot of work. And college and high school is, is, can be a lot for students, and especially coming out of eighth grade. So they have to be willing to put the work in, seek out the supports, um, and stay on top of their studies. Three years of, of graduating students, we, they are in all lots of amazing colleges and universities throughout the country. A lot of CSUs and UCs. Um, we've even had students from our first graduating class um, start have already started finishing four-year degrees. So um, you can kind of take a look at the list here. We have students all over, and this year's senior class is getting ready to apply to, you know, Berkeley, Davis, and all all over. So that we know the classes they took in their four years are transferable to the UCs and CSUs. You see some private universities on here, and so. If students are interested in going out of state or to a private school, we encourage them to do research and we support them in picking classes that will, will help meet their ultimate goal of a four-year degree from where they want to go. The selection process, we will um, take applications and the students who meet the minimum requirements, uh, which is they have to, you know, we'll look, we'll do a review of their their grades, attendance, behavior records. Well, there's some student assurances that we want to go over, parent agreement. And we have the students, it's not a one essay, it's a, they actually answered three questions. It's like kind of applying for college. We're going to ask them to complete three personal insight questions um, as part of their packet and the recommendations. What we'll do is we will have the students list in their application their student their teachers their english teacher their math teacher and another teacher could be a seventh grade teacher could be a counselor it could be an administrator somebody else they'll list them and then we will reach out to those people and send them an electronic recommendation form if we get more than 100 qualified applicants we'll go to a lottery it's more on the application we will post the application. We are doing paper applications. Um, we'll do the recommendations online, but we do want um, you to fill out our paper application. You can print it off the website after Thanksgiving. Um, also, if you don't have a printer, you can pick one up after Thanksgiving break here in our office on campus. We're in the 300 building coming through door 309. We'll put um, a campus map on our website. So any day between nine and four, we have our campus monitor and our school secretary, Ms. Harris, is available to give you a paper application. 
we do not want those filled out applications until next semester. We want eighth graders to finish strong. We really want to see those grades from eighth grade that are A's and B's and C's passing classes. And so we do not, we want them that you can start working on the application, but we're not collecting it until January 11th is the first day. We want it brought to our office. Um, we'll have some you get a, a, a nice clean pen to keep. You'll sign that you turned it in and what time and day, and we'll keep that open for two weeks. Um, so we want it dropped off between nine and four any day in that two week span from January 11th till January 22nd. Applications that come in after January 22nd at four o'clock um, will be considered late. And so if we do a lottery with on time applications, um, it won't be part of our lottery. Then we'll take about a week to go through and send out those teacher recommendations and get those back and review those, read through our applications, make, and then we will, uh, the first week of February, if we need to do a lottery, we'll do the lottery and send out notifications so you know if you got in or if you're on the wait list for the fall in the ninth grade class. So here are um, some contacts for myself and our secretary, Susan Harris. You can send us, you can give us a call or an email if you have questions with the process and um, yeah. All right, so I know that was a lot of information. We, I will post a slideshow and I will post the video of this session on our website, but we do like to have you hear from the students. So I'm gonna stop presenting. And we have some students on here. I'm going to open this up. All right, student panel, are you guys ready to come on to camera? OK. I see a raised hand as Miss Williamson, one of our teachers, has joined. Do you want to jump in real quick, Miss Williamson? Do you have some? Sorry, I've been raising my hand all day in my state meeting, so I must have hit that button and I'm just happy to be here. Excellent. All right. No problem. I just opened that part of my screen. So thank you for joining us. All right. So our student panel, here we go. What my first question is, if you can share with the audience and people that are watching at home, why did you choose early college coming from eighth grade? What made this something that you wanted to be part of? Um, I can go first. So, hi, my name is Brian Miller. I'm a senior. Um, and so I chose to attend early college high school because I like the fact that I could get closer to my associate's degree. And when I went to an Indigo night like this, um, I liked how close the community was and um, like how like everyone knew each other and it was just like so close and stuff. Thank you. I can go next. Uh, my name is Danielle and I'm a junior. I really wanted to come. My mom had heard about this a couple years before I was in eighth grade, like when it was just starting and she had told me about it. And I really liked the idea of being able to get it to get really ahead. And I also really like that you can take more of the classes that you want. Like going in, I was able to take psychology like as a freshman. I, that's not something that I could have done necessarily at Rod. So I like that idea of being able to explore the different college classes and stuff like that. Uh, so hi, my name is Ina. I'm a current sophomore at early college. And I applied mostly because of the fact that you could take college classes and uh, complete your high school diploma uh, at the same time. And I also liked the environment that early college offered. I liked the fact that um, while you were on campus, you prepared yourself for what a college experience would feel like in the future, as well as just being able to take the college classes. Great, thank you. Um, hi, my name is Marianne. I am also a current sophomore at early college. And similar to Ina, I really like the idea of taking college classes when you're in high school to get the feel of how college would be like. Also, I just thought that going to early college would work best with my schedule and where I live too. So I just added that into my decision. Okay. 
Um, hi, my name is Tanya. I'm a sophomore. And going off of what everyone said, I also like the idea of being able to get a heads up for college classes while taking high school classes. And I also like the amount of freedom that was mentioned when I went to like an info night like this. The fact that it would be on a college and it would give us free periods, like Mr. Pizzo said, on Fridays, where we just kind of have our own time to do whatever we need to do, whether that be study in groups or just kind of take a break in the day. And I really like that they would give us that much trust to do what we have, whatever we need to do. All right, well, thank you. Yeah, that Friday is a fun, you'll often walk into the cafeteria and see some kids uh, taking a break, maybe playing cards or a game or working on some last minute homework or doing some studying. So it's a real nice kind of feel that you don't see on a typical high school, high school campus. All right, next question. Can you reflect on your freshman year, your first year, walking out of an eighth grade program? Maybe you can let us know where you went to eighth grade. Um, can you share a little experience or maybe the first class you took and how that went? Um, so I went to the Public Safety Academy um, and I was really nervous when, like my freshman year, um, it's definitely stressful at first, um, but once you get the hang of it, it's a good program and you get to meet everyone and meet new friends. And it was just, uh, started being really fun, but at the beginning, it's a little bit nervous, nerve wracking, cause you're around college students and stuff. But once you get the hang of everything and get the hang of studying and, um, how fast paced everything is and you're good to go. I would agree with that, that at first it can be a little bit or a lot scary and overwhelming. I went to Green Valley for my eighth grade. So it's definitely a new experience, but you have to just like push through like the very first, the very start of your experience. And then once you do, like you get used to it really fast and then you start to be able to appreciate all the nice things about the program. So I had a little bit of a different experience. Um, this is actually my first year at early college. I was waitlisted when I first applied and I was placed 41 on the waitlist and um, I attended Rodriguez and I had a really good experience. I attended Green Valley before that, but um, I shift kind of like what everybody else said. It was kind of scary from going to this like one environment where I was the oldest going to this totally different environment. So, but yeah, this is my first year. Um, so I also went to Green Valley Middle School, and originally I was super excited to go to early college. I was just so ready to leave my middle school, and one thing I didn't realize was how much work it was going to be, and it's definitely hard in the beginning to manage everything in your workload, but after you get the hang of it, it gets a lot better, and you just need to know how to manage your time well. Um, I went to Sheldon for my eighth grade, uh, for eighth grade, and like everyone said, at first it is hard and it is nerve wracking walking into a place where there's a possibility that you won't know anyone since there's only a certain amount of students that get in, going from a totally different environment. But I will say though that the staff help a lot because all the teachers make sure that you're up to date. They're always asking if you need help with anything, whether that be mentally or just in school, like in general with homework. And I like how it was like, a, it's a smaller environment, smaller than regular high schools. So I'd say that everyone gets along well. And by the end of your senior year, you'll know everyone in the program, which can help because that can mean you can have more study groups once you get to know more people. Great, thank you. Thank you for sharing. And, and Ina is in such a unique spot because she's in that 10th grade class where we expanded after the waitlist. So we got to bring in 35 students from the waitlist that, to join us in 10th grade, but they haven't even set foot on the campus. So they're 10th graders that are new and they haven't even got to be here yet because we're on distance learning. So we have 35 10th graders and 100 ninth graders that haven't even got to set foot on this college campus. And that's kind of what the really unique and great part of our program is. So they're just looking forward to when we're able to start doing that again. So yeah, thank you for sharing. Uh, if you wanna do a quick wraparound again of what college classes are you taking now and what, what are you thinking about taking next semester? You could share that. 
um, for my first um, year at early college, I took the R10, and it was a very interesting class. I personally really liked it. The professor was a really good professor. She was the life of the party. She was so much fun, and her teaching was amazing. And I'm currently taking photography. I would recommend the class. It's a really nice class. Although with it being like distance learning, I will say that it is harder just because you can't physically go out and with groups and take pictures together. So that does make it more difficult, but it's still a good class. And for this upcoming semester, I plan on taking child development in Spanish one. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, so freshman year, I took uh, French and cinema. And right now I'm taking French and public speaking. Uh, French is a great class. The professor is wonderful. I love her. She's so nice and she's so understanding and she's a really good teacher. Cinema, um, the first cinema class I took, it was a little bit hard. The professor was very confusing and for the entire semester, I didn't know my grade. So that was kind of stressful. But the one I took over the summer was super chill. It was online and it was super easy. Um, and public speaking right now is a super easy class, um, especially since it's online. It's just nice to have like, that breather class that's not that stressful. And next semester, I plan to take French 3 and criminal justice. Great. Thank you. Maya? Um, so freshman year, I took um, Spanish and uh communications i think and spanish too my second semester was one of the most fun college classes i've ever taken i love the professor and i love just that whole class everyone knew each other it was just a really fun class um so this semester i am taking chemistry right now and i am taking women's history um chemistry is really hard but um and it's a lot more difficult now that it's online, but I'm getting through it and it's just different than it would be in class. Um, and then next semester, I plan on taking um, a math class like algebra or stats and then English too. And then that should get me to um, all of the credits I need to get in the AA, so. Danielle, do you want to share? Uh, the first class I took as a freshman was psychology. It was intro to psych, and that was really cool because I really loved it. And so now I'm getting my AA in psych, hopefully. So this semester, since I finished high school math last year with Math 2-3, I'm taking trigonometry and statistics as college classes. And then next semester, I hope to take college algebra as well as another psych class. And I'm debating between two different psych classes. Um, so the first college class I took was actually a summer class. I took sociology. And um, right now I'm taking Spanish one and um, pub intro to public speaking. Uh, next semester, I hope to take uh, intro to psychology, Spanish two, and maybe I'm debating taking a third class, um, which would be a uh, history of news. Thank you. All right, the next question about playing high school sports or extra doing act extracurricular activities can definitely be a challenge while you're at early college. How do you manage, um, can you share what activities that you're participating in, if any, and how do you manage your schedule? How does it work? Going the going the early colleges and having extracurricular activities or sports at Rodriguez. Um, so I'm an all star cheerleader and I do cheer an hour away from um, where I live, and so that was definitely a stressful part of doing sports. But I've always been busy because I've always done sports like my whole life, so it's just getting used to it and knowing how to balance your schedule. Um, I would do my homework on the hour drive to and from practice um, and just adapting and definitely using an agenda has been really useful. Um, but yeah, it's 
And then this year I'm doing um, cheer at Rodriguez. So I'm just trying to get everything in, but I have a lot less stressful year this year. So it's been a lot better. Is anybody else doing any athletics at Rodriguez they want to share or have done in the past? Um, hi, I am a club swimmer and I also swam for Rod last year before the season got cut sh short because of Corona. But um, swim, I actually swim at Sasso, which is at the community college. So after school, I would go to the cafeteria and I would do my homework. And then after I do my homework, I would go to practice and then I'd go home, take a shower, and then do more homework again. Um, I would say that it's a little bit hard managing your schedule because swim, I would swim in the morning and then I'd swim in the afternoon too. So it'd be a lot, it'd be very stressful. But after you manage your time and you can work your way through getting all your homework done and studying and still having time to swim and all that stuff, it gets a lot easier. Okay, great. Uh, the next question is about clubs. Um, are you in any clubs? And can you share a little bit about um, which clubs you're, you're in and what kind of, or what's your favorite thing about early college? Either way. Um, I'm actually in two different clubs. I am in Key Club and I have been in Key Club since my first semester as a freshman. And I think Key Club is a good opportunity to get volunteer hours. It's a lot of fun. The people in the key club are really helpful and really nice. A lot of them are upperclassmen, so they do help the, the freshmen out to get them more volunteer hours, which is really helpful. And then I recently joined Hope Club, which is a very nice thing. It's held uh, thurs every other Thursday during lunch, I believe. And it's just kind of a space where you can go and talk about how you feel, how de-stress in like a non-judgmental place with people new people that you get to know through the club. And one of my favorite things about the college, I think I mentioned this before, but it was like the amount of freedom that they give us. The fact that they don't, they, the teachers aren't checking up on us in between periods and like being like, okay, like you have to go do this from this time to this time. They just give us our freedom and trust that we will manage our time wisely enough to complete everything that we need to complete. Thank you. So the clubs that I'm in are National Honor Society, and I've actually been in that club for three years, and I've been the secretary for two years. And then I'm also in Senior Class Club, um, and both of those meet like Fridays, um, different times in the month. Um, but Senior Class Club is definitely, when you're a senior, it's a definitely fun thing to be in because you get to like make decisions for senior stuff and yeah, just fun, I guess. Okay. I'm in a few different clubs, but I'll talk about Academic Decathlon and as well as Book Club, which started recently. So Academic Decathlon, it's an academic club. So you, it is a little bit more extra work than some other clubs might be, but I find it really fun because you get to research like a specific topic for about half the year and then test on it and then you get you can get medals and the team's just really supportive and it's a good experience and then i'm also in book club which started recently and we're start we just started reading a new book so that's really exciting and then one of the things i wanted to mention about one of my favorite things about early college is how for one you're with pretty much the same group of teachers throughout all four years so when you get to know them and they get to know you, it makes everything a million times easier. You know how classes go. They know how you are as a student and can how to best support you. And that's something that's really positive, I think. Great, thank you. Anybody else want to jump in on this question? Uh, yeah, so currently I'm in two different clubs. I'm also in academic decathlon and um, I'm an, also a member of Honor Society. And um, those are two really fun clubs that I'm currently participating in. And my favorite thing about early college has to be like the community that it brings. I mean, I haven't even been on campus yet, but the uh, students are all so welcoming and they're all so kind. And the staff is also really great. Like there's some really amazing teachers. 
Okay, so similar to Danielle and Ina, I'm also an academic decathlon, and I'm also an honor society. Um, I just started honor society this year, so I don't really know how it's going to be, but I can already tell it's going to be very fun. And I also really love academic decathlon. While it, it is a lot of work, because, you know, you're still going to take tests and you're going to study a completely different topic, it is a lot of fun to learn about new stuff, and it's even more fun when you medal because you feel really proud of yourself when you do. And one thing I really love about early college is, like Ina said, the community and the people. Last year, the freshman class was so close. We were all really good friends, and it was really nice to know everyone and be friendly with everyone. And also the teachers. The teachers are all really supportive and nice, and I really appreciate that. Well, great. Thank you. So these five students are in a mixture of 10th grade, 11th grade, and 12th grade. They're in leadership. They are also student mentors. So everybody in leadership in zero period that um, has a new student that they mentor. So all 100 new students next year will be assigned a mentor that will check in with them, that will support them and be with them for their whole first year if they ever need anything and want to talk to student to student. So we have a lot of supports with teachers and students supporting each other. So thank you all. There's one more question that we have. And so would you recommend early college to others and what advice would you give to somebody who is thinking about applying right now? Um, I would 100% recommend um, this program to others. Um, it can be stressful at some points, but I think it's really good um, in the end. Um, we get so many opportunities. We get to work up to our AAs or just get college credits in general. And I think that it's just a great like close knit community. Um, so I would definitely recommend this community or this um, program. Thank you. I 100% agree. Like I always say that joining early college was one of like the best decisions I've made because just it's been such an amazing experience. So to someone who's thinking of applying, I'd say like know what you're getting into for sure. So look into it and decide whether it's good for you. But you know, it's going to be a lot of work at times, but it's really worth it. Adding on to what they said, I would definitely recommend someone to come. But you like um, Danielle said, you have to know what you're getting into. For me specifically, when I found out about the program, it was like right before the whole like application system was closing. So I didn't find out much about the program other than it would like it was a good opportunity to, to be able to take college classes and high school classes. So after I got to early college, it was kind of like adjusting as well as finding out what the program program was really about. So I would dec definitely recommend looking into the program and thinking about if you would be able to handle the pace and all of the classes. But overall, you do have a lot of support from the staff, the teachers and the students. So if you really wanted to join early college and think you could handle it, I'd say go for it. Um, like I completely agree with what everybody has said so far. I think that if you genuinely really want to attend the program, then you should 100% apply. I've, it's like really educational and I completely recommend the program, yeah. I also recommend the program. I love it here. The students, the teachers, everything about this program is great. Even though like they all mentioned, it can get stressful at times. Everyone's so supportive. And if you're really motivated to be in the program, it's just wonderful. I love it here. All right, well, thank you students. I appreciate you guys being part of this and logging in. Um, so we're gonna have we have another information night where we'll cover the same information, but then we'll, we're will we planning a, like a virtual open house. Um, so stay tuned for more information if you want to ask more questions and we didn't cover some things tonight. We'll have more opportunities for you to interact with the teachers and, and some other of the students as well. So what I think we're going to do now is we've been on here for an hour. We're going to turn the recording off and give people a chance to unmute and ask a question to the students. Um, or ask a question that, this, that that I can answer. We have Miss Staggs here, we see one of our teachers. So we can answer some questions or you can put things in the chat and we'll answer those. 
but um, taking the recording off so you feel comfortable um, asking those questions. And if anybody um, like that, look back on that slide, we feel free to reach out to me. Um, again, I'm John Pizzo, the principal. You can email me at johnpi at fsusd.org. And I appreciate the people that have logged in. So stay in if you want to ask some questions or hear some of the responses from the students. And, um, and thank you if you're watching from home at some other time. Thank you for watching and let us know if you have any future questions that we can support you with. Applications, like I said, will post on our website. You can print them out. It'll explain what to do, um, but you can always call. We'll walk you through the process or come by our office. We social distance. We're wearing a mask. Ms. Susan Harris is here. We have our campus monitor. Ms. Elvira is here to greet you when you come in. We'll give you an application um, by hand. We can answer questions um, practicing social distancing here on campus in our early college office. So thank you all, and let me... Turn the recording off.